Number one, finding out the relative atomic mass of four isotopes. The chart shows the relative abundance. So what they are saying is that 50% or 0 0.5 by fraction has 90 as mass number. 0 0.1 has 91, 0 0.2, 92. None of them are 93 and 0 0.2 portion of them is 94. So how do we find the average atomic mass? We take 0 0.5 multiplied by 90, 0 0.1 by 91 and then when we add them all up we get 91.3 number two the hydrocarbon undergoes combustion we get 35.2 grams of carbon dioxide 14.4 grams of water so what is the formula of the hydrocarbons we use the information of the masses here from this mass of carbon dioxide we find the number of moles by dividing it with the MR so we have 0 0.8 moles of carbon dioxide, which is actually 0 0.8 moles of carbon also. From water, we find the number of moles of water, 14.4 divided by 18. We have 0 0.8 moles of hydrogen or 0 0.8 moles of water. We have to be careful to find the moles of hydrogen because water has two moles of hydrogen each. So we have to take 0 0.8 multiplied by 2. We have 1.6 moles of hydrogen. Finally, we take the moles of the hydrocarbon given in the question 0 0.2 carbon calculated to be 0 0.8 hydrogen 1.6 so for every one mole of hydrocarbon there will be 4 moles of carbon and 8 moles of hydrogen which will give us D Number 3 we have the graph that shows a decreasing property from beryllium down to barium. So this is down group 2. So the property that decreases down the group will be ionization energy. It, is, it takes less energy to remove the electron as you go down the group due to the increase in the shielding effect. If you look at the other options, the ionic radius should be increasing because we are in adding on the number of shells. The neutron-proton ratio, if we base the number of neutrons as estimated to be the atomic mass in the periodic table, subtract the proton, we will have 5, 12 and 20 and so on for the number of neutrons. And then we take divide by protons, we can see that actually they are almost approximately 1 so it doesn't decrease down the group rate of reaction with water it's easier to lose the electrons the metals actually get more reactive down the group number four the angles of this molecule we have to check the number of lone pairs and the number of bond pairs for X there are two bond pairs and two lone pairs so it is actually bent if we use water as a gauge it's slightly uh, near 105 degrees why is a tetrahedral sh shape around this carbon because there are four bond pairs so it's around 109.5 degrees Z three bond pairs one lone pair it will be what we call trigonal pyramidal 107.5 so in terms of the sizes, the largest will be Y, then Z, then X. Number five, largest overall dipole. We can check the carbons and the atom is joined to. If there's a large difference in electronegativity, right? For example, in this one, the cap, the chlorine, chlorine is more electronegative. So there will be a dipole moment along this bond. But because these four chlorines are pulling in opposite directions with equal amounts, they will all cancel each other out. There will be no overall dipole. For B, we have oxygen, electronegative pulling in the direction. Whereas carbon and hydrogen, they have slight 
only slight differences in their electronegativity so we won't really see a dipole moment in this bond therefore there is an overall dipole moment along this direction for option C chlorine will be pooling so will be oxygen to a certain extent so these three forces will more or less cancel each other out uh, much more than what option B provides us D we have a linear molecule oxygen oxygen pulling in 180 degrees from each other so overall there's no dipole moment so number 5B will be the one that has the largest dipole moment Number six, we have formation, enthalpy change of formation. So in general, heat of formation of products minus heat of formation of reactants will be heat of formation or heat of reaction. And we have to remember to multiply the heat of formation with the stoichiometry ratio in the ex in the equation. So four times of your NO, 6 times of your H2O, minus 4 times of your ammonia. We do not include oxygen because heat of formation of elements are defined to be zero. So once we have this, we use the calculator, we can get minus 905.2 kilojoules. Number seven. To check which one involves a reduction of chromium, we can check the oxidation state of chromium in in these substances. Useful rules to remember is oxygen in a compound usually is minus 2 and chlorine in a compound usually is minus 1. And then the overall sum of the oxidation states equals to the charges. So we have plus 6 for A and B. So no changes and C is also plus 6 throughout whereas if you look at D we have chlorine or chromium to be plus 6 here and chromium to be plus 3 so this involves a reduction a drop in oxidation state for chromium number 8 which one contributes to the change in the KP, you have to appreciate that KP, KCs, they change when there's a change in temperature. Right? A pressure or change in concentration or the presence of catalyst will not, in, will not affect KP or KC. So D will be the answer. Number 9. We have dissociation of PCL5. It dissociates 13% at 160 degrees and if we increase the temperature, it dissociates at 100%. This is telling us that the equilibrium sh shifts to the right when the temperature is increased. And when do that happen? It happens when the forward direction of a reversible reaction is endothermic. And because when we increase temperature, the direction will be shifted to the endothermic direction to remove the heat. So from this information we know that the reaction is endothermic. Then we have to check the shape of the molecule. PCL3 phosphorus uses one electron to join to chlorine and then it has five outer electrons so it has two that is unused. So I should get rid of this pair okay. so 3 bond pair 1 lone pair in other words the shape is actually trigonal pyramidal okay. not seesaw or distorted that I have originally written so it's pyramidal endothermic Number 10, which one will proceed the most rapidly with the highest yield? 
most rapidly means the forward direction the activation energy is the lowest so that most portion of it will actually go over to the product side so we look for the one that has low activation energy which is C so the rate of reaction is fastest here and also we can see that we will get a very high yield because the backward direction is has a high activation energy it's difficult for the products to go backwards to the reactants so this one will make it fast and high yield eleven which of these statements are correct reaction one is the overall reaction and how is the overall reaction how does it proceed it proceeds by the catalyst of your copper you can see that copper plus changes to copper 2 plus and later on copper 2 plus change back to copper plus if we merge the two reaction one and uh, reaction two and three we cancel out the copper we actually get back reaction one so essentially your coppers are your catalysts your copper ions we can eliminate the others by checking also copper plus acts an oxidizing agent reaction 2 you can see your copper plus causes your chlorine to be reduced your chlorine is reduced your copper plus is a reducing agent reaction 1 or reaction 2 is the one in which the light is absorbed well when light is absorbed your silver plus becomes silver so actually light is absorbed in reaction 1 silver plus are oxidized in reaction 1 silver plus becomes silver drops in oxidation state so silver plus is reduced Number 12, 